and such meditations in several other conflict zones as well we have done in iraq we have done uh, in colombia where there used to be a civil war almost all the time we have helped the display internally displaced citizens in colombia we have done meditation in kashmir where there was conflict so in the northeast of india also we have done meditations like that uh, in iraq especially i was there in erbil when the yesidis were uh, in big trouble the entire yesidi community were uh, were cornered by by the extremist and uh, we were conducting meditation there also in the camps in the refugee camps but the, here in poland yesterday we did a big meditation in the stadium and the, it was open to everybody the public as such so a lot of people came and they all felt uh, you know there is a hope and uh, they could get over this feeling of helplessness hopelessness to uh, em internally emotionally empowered and they could feel that now we are strong we can all together uplift the voice of peace the voice of peace must be heard loud and clear you know most of the people on the planet they love peace there are just a handful of people who you know uh, who are unconscious about what they are doing they don't know the pain and suffering they are inflicting on the population perhaps so i would like the voice of peace to be heard loud and louder so that uh, the noise of the bombs get silenced this sounds very um Utopian, I know. A little bit utopian, <laughs> but what would you say to Vladimir Putin if you would meet him tomorrow? You know, I never plan my talk beforehand. I'm always spontaneous. So at that time, I will see what comes to me.